Welcome to the Knowledge Well. I'm Julia from the Full Well team, and today I'm in conversation with Elizabeth A. Davis. She's a Tony Award and Drama Desk nominated award actor and has spent a ton of time in film and on television. You'll probably recognize her from some of your favorite TV shows. She's currently breathing new life into the role of Thomas Jefferson in the Broadway revival of 1776. And I say that because she's playing that role, not just as a woman, but as a pregnant woman. In fact, she's just over a week out from giving birth to her second child. So at the time of recording, she's mother of one beautiful, healthy boy. But um, once you finish this, you might want to check back in with her on her Instagram to see some baby pics because that little girl is coming into the world fast. All right, Elizabeth, welcome. Today, I feel pretty good. We are how many days out from due date right now? 11. 11. We're so close. 11, the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 12 days of baby. Thank you yeah, for taking exactly. your time uh, to be with us. So like I mentioned before, Elizabeth is currently starring as Thomas Jefferson in 1776 okay. on Broadway. And that show is shaking things up in a lot of different ways. But in particular, because you have been performing uh, and not just performing, like singing your face off, playing <laughs> the violin at an incredibly high level um, all throughout this pregnancy. So can you talk about kind of like what, when did you find out you were pregnant? What was that process like? I did not find out officially that I was uh, pregnant and that it was viable um, until 15 weeks there's quite a backstory. I, I, um, endured two miscarriages in 2021. So uh, and I also knew that I was, I knew that I was pregnant in, um, March, which is not something that I have made part of the narrative up until this point. Um, I had, and this is also, I'm not sure how to talk about this because it it's, can be so polarizing or divisive and it's, it shouldn't be. Um, but I had a vaccine reaction mm. that, that mimicked um, what I thought was a chemical pregnancy loss. It was not, mm. it was not, it was just simply a menstrual um, cramping. Um, but when you're, when you've had two miscarriages and when you, um, are having that sort of reaction at around the same time that you previously had a miscarriage, it's very difficult to not interpret it as such. And then I really had no other way to understand what it was. Um, and then after that happened, I think three days later, I went into rehearsal for 1776. So I went into rehearsal thinking that I had just had, in essence, my third miscarriage. The entirety of rehearsal and the first month and a half of performances um, <clears throat> I was working through what I interpreted as grief and my body uh, continuing to heal. And so any signs of pregnancy, I was interpreting as my body recovering. Right. It's so difficult for women, <laughs> to be quite honest, because to, to be honest about our bodies, to to also like we, we carry so many things at the same time. You know, I I believe in the power of, I, I believe in a vaccinate. I believe in this vaccine. I also simultaneously can't be dishonest about what my reaction to it was. So I think that as women, we often have to hold things simultaneously. And I am passionate about politics, not influencing um, medicinal interpretations. That being said, that is why I did not think that I was pregnant until 15 weeks. I thought I had an ulcer. So I went to a city MD at like 540 at night um, on the July 4th break and said, yeah, I think I've just, I, I don't know what, I have an ulcer. And they're like, I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> no, here's a positive pregnancy test. Um, and then it was, and, and then I walked through several weeks of the show um, in our pre-Broadway run where I didn't have a lot of conclusive answers. I didn't know if the pregnancy was was healthy. I didn't know um, 
a lot of things. And so the show became, and the, and the, and the people in the show became this incredible constant for me of um, creating and, and allowing me um, distraction and also feeling as if I was making, I, I, I was, I was making a piece of art that I was passionate about. And then to simultaneously then start folding in this idea of also creating life. I, I've never experienced anything like that in my creative ventures of, of really having a biological process on top of a creative process that were perfectly overlaid. Yeah. I can't imagine how special that was. And for for those who aren't quite tapped into the Broadway scene, this particular production of 1776 is so special um, because normally it's a giant cast of men. And this go around, it's all women from all kind of walks of life. It's a very diverse, unique and ultra talented cast. I'm actually getting goosebumps just kind of remembering <laughs> some of my favorite moments from the show it was, it was something really special to see so how how do you think uh being surrounded by so many really strong brilliant women kind of like helped you reconcile that biological process with the creative yeah it was essential it, it was a lot of um support that i that was unspoken there was just a lot of unspoken cellular support surrounding me. And I also knew because of the casting, because of the way that Diane Paulus and Jeffrey Page had, had cast the show, that I could get away with telling the story inside my pregnant self. I, I saw it, especially for Jefferson, because Jefferson is painted as the reluctant lover who's giving birth to the Declaration. So at this point, people have come to the show and they think that it's all conceptual. They don't think that I'm actually pregnant. But I knew that the metaphor and the way that the casting had been conceived would work so that it wasn't so, so that because, you know, as an artist, as you, you yourself are, we're constantly looking for meaning and we're constantly looking for narrative arc and we're, we're looking for ways that things, you know, double entendres and ways that things lay on top of each other to deepen a theme. This just happened to be exactly that deepening. So, you know, my castmates have now said, like, we can't imagine Jefferson not pregnant. I have a bunch of aunties now surrounding this, um, this child and, and, and a variety of, you know, people of all walks of life and interpretations and um, people that love me and and have loved me through this process. So um, I just couldn't be more thankful. Yeah. Despite how difficult it has truly been, it's been very difficult. Um, and that's something that I don't like, I want people to know it's real so that they can, um, they can see the enormity of the strength that our bodies are capable of just how strong and resilient the pregnant body is. Um, but simultaneously, I and I mentioned this before, I, I also have had to listen to my body. And, you know, I, and I, I've said this in other interviews, I've said this to my director and everyone. As soon as my body says no, as soon as my body says that's it, um, then, then I must be obedient to that. Yeah. And I think that's a great reminder for all women in general, whether they're performing in a Broadway show or, you know, just kind of living life. I think it's, it's a certain personality type that is really resistant to slowing down. Um, <laughs> but, but the, the pregnant body is such a like beautiful, wonderful thing. And it's an experience you don't necessarily get over and over to, you know, come back to speaking of the like performance aspect, the kind of physical aspect, I couldn't help but notice. So when I saw the show, I saw um, Crystals last night. Oh, uh, yeah. so it was so emotional. Um, the actor playing John Adams, she's phenomenal. Uh, I also went and saw her. So she left, I guess, to do a different play on Broadway. Yeah. Uh, hair flip for her. She's phenomenal. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in her show, Ain't No Mo, there was another um, pregnant actor on stage and that there were scenes where um, in this play, it was relevant that she was 
a pregnant person on on stage, but uh, you know, most of the play, she was just an actor, being an actor, and there wasn't necessarily like a call toward it. So yeah. while while it is like extremely special and profound to be able to be up there and be like truly really pregnant. <laughs> Um, do you, what are your thoughts on, um, Broadway seeming to kind of not see pregnancy as something that takes you out of the game? I think it is exciting. I do think it is exciting. And I think that my job, I'm showing up as an actor. First and foremost, I have a very clear job. The minute I'm unable to do that job in the way that I've been hired to do it, I'm not going to be a sympathy case. I'm not going to be simply a mantle that I expect everyone to help me, you know, that, that I'm trying to send a message. If I can send that message that pregnant women and pregnant people can be on Broadway and I can simultaneously do my job effectively, then amazing. And if other women can do that, amazing. I'm also careful because every pregnancy is different. And so I also don't want to simultaneously be on the razor's edge of saying, you know, this is what every pregnant woman should be capable of doing when, when there are many, many complications around, you know, some of which I've experienced myself previously. So I, I think that I am cautiously, carefully optimistic about what that some, what that, what my visibility in this show has kind of signaled. And I I also have been very, uh, and I would encourage, you know, other actors who find themselves in this situation potentially to just be very communicative, you know, to be very upfront and honest. And also this is the second part though, does it serve the story? And if it, if, you know, in the same way that we cast someone who's going to bring the, the most powerful essence to the interpretation of a character. If th there are many roles that a pregnant woman could do, and it would bring meaning and depth to the narrative, mm -hmm. there are other roles that it, that might not be the case. And right. just like any casting process, we can't demand that pregnant women, I, I'm not trying to say with my presence in this show, that we should now demand that pregnant women be able to play any role. And, and then also, I don't want to put the idea or the impression forward that women should endanger themselves in order to do so. But do I think that there has been a, uh, <coughs> to use your words, <clears throat> well, you're just out of the game now and you have to go sit on the sidelines because you're not able to do this. Do I think that that is in large part hogwash? I do. When I was pregnant with my son, I did King Lear. And uh, I, rem I, you know, I was back and forth with the director about if this would work, et cetera. And I, upon reading the text, um, I came to the conclusion that for the specific role I was playing, I was playing Goneril, who is the oldest daughter in the King Lear story. There's a scene where King Lear curses her progeny. And uh, it's this very heated scene where if you, I'm actually, this was actually my costume piece in that show. <laughs> this is my maternity dress for King Lear. Um for the story to put a pregnant woman in front of her father and have him curse her and his lineage, you really don't have to do much more because in the story, she is a traditionally difficult character to justify. And she's kind of thought of as hard nosed and she kicked her dad out of the house. And isn't she horrible? You make her pregnant. It's easy peasy. She makes total sense. Right. <laughs> so another instance of something that wouldn't be thought of in that way, but ultimately on closer investigation, it deepens the narrative in a meaningful way. Thank you, son. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still having a conversation. Okay, buddy. Thank you. He brought me an orca. 
a, a killer whale, excuse me. <clears throat> so obviously being in a Broadway show, very tough. Being a pregnant woman, very tough in many different ways. Being both of those things and a mother, <laughs> triple tough. You're a triple threat, as we say in the theater. <laughs> there you go. There you how, go. how have you... Um, how have you kind of navigated parenting while also being on this really intense journey? Yeah. Well, you're a Texas girl, so you'll understand this. <laughs> I don't know if it's my wiring. I don't know if it's being raised on a farm by just dyed in the wool farmers and ranchers. But I have said this before, that there there is a grit that has been required in this specific go round of life that has been cultivated for a long time in my life. That, that was primarily cultivated by coming to New York city, not knowing a single soul and enduring and finding my way without much direction to a Broadway stage. So there <clears throat> I'm used to paying prices that seem unpayable sometimes um so yeah so this season had an enormous price tag on it it really did there's there, it's it's a it's a priceless season so there's no way that i wasn't going to pay it my son and my future daughter and my husband and our sanctity and our family life is penultimate. And simultaneously, I believe that my work is, is a very high calling. And they just happened to coincide in such a way that I had to receive as a, it, it was an inevitable moment that I had to rise to the challenge. And so all of the messy moments and the impossible calendaring and pickups and disastrous apartment moments, it's been a good reminder and lesson in that, you know, chaos can be a gift because it can remind you of what's really important. And so enduring through chaos uh, it, it comes with its own rich benefits you know it really does that's so been real hard that's the short answer yeah. <laughs> my body has certainly been saying this ninth month we need we need different things we need some different things so so what are you doing to take care of yourself right now do you have any little rituals or mantras mm -hmm. or any little um like physical yeah. habits that you're getting into as you realize you need different things yeah, I'm taking a lot of showers, like just brass tacks. I'm taking a lot of showers and baths and just being in the tub and, you know, just moving my pelvis, moving, you know, just stretching, opening, um, being kind, uh, kind of really going into that mind of, of birth, I think, of being an actor and being in labor was such a trip because all of the vocal training and all of the things, all of the, like the on stage stress tools that I use as an actor all came in super helpful during birth, which I, I had a natural vaginal birth with my son. Um, we'll see this next time I'm in talks with my doula. Um, I do have some strained ribs, so that's another situation. Um, but uh, the the ability to breathe through pain and not go up into the high pitched registers to deal with pain, but to keep it low and in the diaphragm and bellowing, <laughs> that was all like theater vocal training, <laughs> right? So uh, yeah, and so to tap into that and be like, wow, these two things are so primally connected um has is a comfort you know it's like I feel as if I've as I've been on stage singing and like having the strength to sing while also carrying at this point seven pounds of weight 
and still projecting sound. Like that's all helpful for pain management in labor. Yeah, the kindness and the comfort uh, of the mind space that I'm in is is part of my transition, as well as the showers and the Epsom salt and and letting things be a mess in the apartment. It makes me insane. Even just being a person living in New York City, like I, people who don't live there don't get that like your space needs to be curated fam like anyone else around or not because it's just so confined yes um, it's very important to have a curated yeah we people are like what's your registry and I'm like I, there's about four things on the registry throughout your pregnancy were you a bigger fan of cooking in or taking out it depended on the trimester really yeah it, it really the first trimester uh, before I knew I was pregnant, I, I didn't know what was going on. I just wanted watermelon right. and <clears throat> pasta and yogurt for some reason. And then in the second trimester, I was, I was loving cooking and just doing all the bone broths and doing all the right things. Um, and this third trimester has been a combination of both just based on, you know, the chaos element I was talking about. I have a feeling that this question will also kind of go by trimester, but are you a sweet girl or a salty girl? Good question. Yeah, it it, it has been trimester based. First trimester, definitely sweet. Mm -hmm. That's so weird. With my son, I craved bagels. So just anything like heavy carby to make you feel as if you're soaking up all those hormones. Right. (laughs) Um, And now I guess with all the bone broth I'm drinking, I've got to say savory. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually I'm. Hot, doesn't it? Ugh. Oh my gosh! I just that kettle and fire, beef bone broth. Yeah, yeah it's really doing the trick. <laughs> um, so this is the last food-related question, I swear. So, <laughs> um, your son has a babysitter for the evening. You and your husband are going on date night in New York City. What is your go-to place for the two of you? Oh, good question. Uh, one of two either Ted's Montana grill, uh, get some good bison or Pio Pio, which is a Peruvian chicken joint. I know and, Pio. <laughs> yeah. Those are our two, you know, like th- those are like not anniversary locations, obviously, but if we're just going to do like a quick, like, Hey, let's go hang out and talk. Right. Um, probably those two between those what, two. What would be your anniversary location? My, my hubby Jordan has done, he does a really great job of, I mean, some of these places, Beton, I think is not even there anymore. Um, he does a really great job of uh, just being exploratory mm-hmm. and taking us to spots that we rarely return to because they're so extravagant. We've been on an Italian kick because we did go to Italy last year with our son, constantly trying to live in the glory of the food that we had while in Cinque Terre or Venice, you know. You now have 20 minutes to yourself. What are you doing with those 20 minutes, right? Like today, it doesn't have to be uh, like exercise related or self-improvement related. Just like how do you need to spend 20 minutes with no one bothering you right this second? Yeah. If, if my, um, if I was in perfect health or if I was feeling great, I would, I would do a house clean because I just, I love, I just want, I would clean the house mm-hmm. in 20 minutes. Um, if not, I would, I would journal. I would do something. Yeah. I, I, I probably just wouldn't sit and relax unless I was absolutely forced <laughs> to by like, unless my mom said, sit down and don't move your time out. I would not just sit down and relax. Because it's not relaxing to me to sit when so many things are calling my name. I enjoy it. I just, I just, I just live on the ability to keep moving. Get get moving. I love to get moving. I love to just make stuff. I want to make, I just want to make stuff all all the time. Yeah. Well, okay. So speaking of making stuff postpartum, um, what is a show that you've always wanted to do that you are looking forward to maybe tackling in that next phase of your career? Once you're a mom of two, instead of just one. Yeah. I I have an exciting film project coming up this spring. 
Cool. Um, that is, is born out of things that I've written and then also people. So it, it's, it's a, it's an interesting mix of things. And this particular film role, it just checks so many boxes for me. Um, and to be able to have the gift of this project after this delivery is really special. I'm so thankful for it. Um, but as far as like theater canon roles, oh gee. I mean, I've always I've always wanted to play Blanche in Streetcar Named Desire. Mm -hmm. I've played Stella in grad school, but Blanche, a damaged Southern woman, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so I'm just on bated breath to probably play that role. Yeah, that was like my audition for the actor studio. I was like, and they were like, you're doing Blanche from Streetcar Named Desire. Do you realize the founding members of the actor studio actually wrote the, and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I, I don't, I, I'm sorry. This is all yeah. I have. You're like, watch this. You've never seen it like this before. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, do you tell people your baby name or do you hold it close to the chest until she's born? Yeah, based on what I've been through, I I'm we're taking nothing for granted. I won't I'm not gonna utter it until mm -hmm. and we're actually not hundred percent set. So there's that. Um that's the that's the best excuse. Yeah, exactly. We're not sure. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we're not sure. Yeah, I think we know her initials. We're pretty set on that, but we're there were some vowels and syllabic emphasis we're still sorting through. Got it. <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear. Um, last question. I know that when you, and again, I have to kind of just like spell this out for the people who aren't super familiar with how Broadway works. You yeah. perform eight shows a week. So, and that's not including like rehearsals and everything else that goes into being on that stage for so much of your time. So it's probably pretty likely that I, that you don't get to see a lot of the what's in the same season as you when you're in your show. Yeah. So right. what are the shows that you are kind of like dying to see once you are, you know, coming off yes. the stage and just taking a moment to breathe? I'm excited about seeing my show. I'm actually, the, I'm in this, like, they're going to, I think, be extended one week after my due date. So whether that be you know, maybe a few days before my delivery date, if I'm, you know, not at the show, not in the show, or if it's after, I want to see my show. Yeah. And also baby girl has become so familiar with the music in our show. Uh, yes. <laughs> that she's like, she has specific movement patterns during the show based on the music. Oh. And my cast knows that like they can look at my belly in certain moments in the show and see her moving. So it's a very a choreographer. Convenient. Yeah. She's, we call her tiny dancer. Oh. Yeah. So, so I want to see my show. Um, uh, I also want to see death of a salesman mm -hmm. with the um, all African-American cast. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I definitely want to see death of a salesman. I think there's a, I have some friends in off Broadway productions, which, you know, as you know, off Broadway has so many incredible creatively fulfilling projects mm -hmm. between between Riverside and crazy mm -hmm. um, is something that I want to see because I have a pal in that and I'm really proud of her. Um, I mean, I'd love to see the music man, but who mm -hmm. wouldn't um, just for some nostalgia more than anything. It, you're right. Like you just kind of go into a vortex of your show yeah. and like, Oh, Kimberly, uh, Kimberly Akimbo. I have some pals in that and I've heard yeah. that's really special. Mm -hmm. So I want to see that. I have not seen that yet. I I am making my way through. This is the first season that I will be able to see everything on the wow. season. And I get to see Kimberly Akimbo right after the holiday. So I'm super excited about that one. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to know because I'm, I'm really excited for them. Listen, thank you again so, so much. Uh, we appreciate you. We are cheering for you as you go in to your due date and delivery and always here to support you if you need absolutely anything at all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and what you guys are doing.